So in this episode, we're gonna do another book review on the title of Computer Vision in AWS. So we are in a digital world, and it's not like this is day one that we figure out computer vision. It's been out there in the industry for a while now, and it's essentially started by this type of deep learning framework called convolutional neural networks. So through using convolutional neural networks, we are able to process and create these feature maps based on the pixel value from images captured from cameras. So that's great, that provides a starting point. But what this book is doing is actually to take a step further and create a whole sleuth, a whole portfolio of solutions that's AI driven at the tip of your finger point. Specifically, we're gonna be talking about this particular type of service on AWS called AWS Recognition. As a full disclaimer, I just wanna say that I do use this type of technology in my professional career, but I wanna make sure that the content of this video is based solely on my reading of the book alone. It certainly doesn't represent any project, any company, any legal entity outside of this book. So hopefully that provides you that unbiased feedback, and certainly I'm gonna take my own bias outside of the equation. There are three authors for this title. They are Lauren Mullenex, Nate Bachmeier, and Jay Rao. So if you're watching this video, apologize up front if I'm butchering your name. But let's start with the author review. As the first thing I do in every book that I review, author is the most important thing that I look for. If the author has a great profile, that's something that shows great credibility to the book's title. And that's exactly the case happening here. So we'll start with Lauren. She's a senior AI ML solution architect at AWS. And not only is she leading women in science, she also brought on the table a broad range of experience in computer vision, machine learning, and building AI-driven solutions. And for that, I'm grateful to see that her name is on the author list of this book. Next coming up, we have Nate. This guy is a legend. He has a PhD, he has an MBA, he's all over the places. Not only is he the principal solution architect at AWS, interestingly enough, he focuses a lot on financial industry. So not only does he build a tech, right, he also knows how money works, which I thought is very interesting. Last, we have Jay Rao. Jay is also a principal solution architect at AWS, and all three of them have amazing experience to put together this book to share with the audience. So I'm particularly grateful and it's a great honor for me to be here to talk about this book. And I can't wait to dive in a couple of interesting topics about this book. First things first, especially in part one, the authors have laid out this diagram, kind of like a Venn diagram, except that it's in squares. So right on the outside, we have AI, artificial intelligence. And then a subdomain of AI can be machine learning. Whereas computer vision lives inside of machine learning. I thought that's an interesting relationship diagram to start with because I've certainly seen similar documentation before that people have been listing computer vision as a separate diagram. But hey, point well taken, I think this is a fair description of what that relationship looked like. So in other words, when you're doing computer vision, you are doing ML, but when you're doing machine learning, it doesn't have to be computer vision. So this diagram demonstrates that layer of relationship perfectly well. And it also points a certain direction, right? Because if you understand this diagram, then you know what tools are needed. You're gonna to have to start with classical ML related topics, supervised learning, unsupervised learning, that sort of thing. And then you're gonna to have to dive into image related data set. So that gives you a starting point. And then to illustrate the idea of computer vision, the authors start with chest x-ray data set, which I really appreciate because during my time as a graduate student, I certainly write a good amount of papers on that data set. So I particularly like that as a starting point. It's really a straightforward data set, it's black and white. The classification task of that data set is well-defined. You load up the data and there you go, you can start building the model. So that is gonna be the baby version data set 101 you have to do when you're getting to computer vision, specifically to handle image data. And then with that being said, you can probably move on to the next tier. So the next tier of computer vision task can be demonstrated from this picture. This is a figure 1.4 from the first chapter. And as you can see, starting from the left, we have semantic segmentation. 
and this type of task is defined such that you need to train an AI to learn from the picture, the pixelated value, to create an image that is the same size, but that the instance are segmented. Meaning that if there's a cat, then that cat need to be a different color in the region of that image. And that's precisely what is demonstrated here. As well as if there's a grass in the background, if there's trees, if there's skies, all those things need to be different color. So this is called semantic segmentation. And then from there, what else can you do? You can also do classification plus localization. And that essentially can be done by YOLO algorithm. YOLO algorithm is short for you only look once. So in that case, you have an object in the picture. In this case, it's a cat. And there's a bounding box drawn over the region of the cat. Now, of course, there's different techniques to really make sure that the bounding box is correct, right? You don't want the bounding box to be too large, that the cat looks too small, or you don't want to be the bounding box to be too small, such that it doesn't really surround the object. So that kind of technique is done by this loss function called the intersection over union, or also known as IOU. So this task in the middle is a single object. There's one cat, and let's draw one bounding box over this object. Where do you go from here? You do multiple objects. So in the case of multiple objects, what if there are two samples that is the same object? Uh, in this picture here, maybe you have two dogs. Then you better recognize that they are two dogs, and not only that, they are two separate dogs. They're not the same dogs. So I thought that was interesting, and this is called object detection, which YOLO algorithm, of course, does that as well. And let me ask a small comment. I said earlier YOLO algorithm works on classification plus localization. That's the fancier version. You don't have to use YOLO algorithm. Uh, you can certainly work around pictures and figure out the way that the bounding box works better without that fancier version of the algorithm. And then last but not least, I believe this is a probably a higher level of task, which is instant segmentation. So in other words, you want to know that this is the dog, but we're not drawing a bounding box. We are actually cropping out the region of where that dog is. And then on top of that, the computer knows that there's a second dog. There's a second sample of that object in the same picture frame. So one big thing I want to say after reading this book is really the impression of how do you sit on top of the services over AWS? How do you overwrite the decisions? How do you really architect the solution at a global scale? Me personally, I tend to worry about those things more than what I do for implementation detail. So I thought in this video, it'd be interesting to show you guys what I mean by that. So specifically, figure 4.5 demonstrates exactly what that idea can look like. I've gone to the book, I thought this is the most interesting example that I want to talk about. The use case is to check the employee's identification at the company, let's say a hotel, right? You walk into the door, there's a camera scanning your face, and you scan your ID, and based on those information, the algorithm should be able to say, great, please come in, you're one of our employees. Or alternatively, you say, no, you're not one of our employees, you're not allowed to come in. So something like that could be an interesting use case for computer vision. And this is the architect on a global level for you to be able to handle that. And at its core, it's of course the service called recognition. So you have a user come into the building. They want to enter. Now you want to identify whether they're an employee or not. At the very front end, we have AWS Amplify to design that user interface, right? Here is a window, and perhaps it's connected with a camera. Here is an app that you can scan your ID, you know, that sort of thing. So after user has information provided in that front end, the user interface, then you essentially make an API call, right? Here we have API gateway in the middle to try to invoke a Lambda function. And this dotted box, number three, it's essentially referring to that Lambda function. And that Lambda function is where all the magic happens, right? So let's talk about what's inside of this Lambda function. Inside of this Lambda function, there's this key component that's based on AWS recognition as well as text rec. So recognition is providing you the visual based task. If there's a face in front of a camera, let's draw a bounding box. And then 
let's crop out what that face area is and then let's check the database to see which employee does that face belong to or have the highest matching score. So that's the first piece. Second piece is Amazon Tax Rep. Amazon Tax Rep will be able to scan your ID and then will be able to extract the information. Since we have that data, let's not throw that away, right? Let's save the data somewhere in a database. In this case, it's Amazon DynamoDB. And then we can perhaps reuse that data. So that is essentially the architect of the solution. And then once you have the decision made from facial, from your ID card, you can then produce an answer saying, hey, this is our employee. And that answer gets sent back to the AWS Amplify. The Amplify will show you on the screen saying, welcome. And then the door will open, you can come in. Or alternatively, it will say, no, you're not one of our employees. Please register with the front desk, something like that. So I thought this is a very interesting. In addition, I just want to say that I always appreciate the complimentary GitHub repo for every title that Pack has published, right? And the same goes with this title. Here is the GitHub repo for all of the code, notebooks, program that's being introduced in this book. And they are pretty much at the tip of your finger. You can download them and check it out yourself. Play around with the code when you're reading the book. I know that's how I learned it. I'm sure you guys will learn a lot by doing things that way. And then in the end, I just want to show you guys a little demo. I've gone online, registered an AWS account myself, and I want to see how easy to use AWS recognition. So as you can see, I haven't used it that much, right? Because the charge for me is only a dollar. But just as a reminder, it does charge you money. So be aware of the services that you use. Make sure to shut it down after you use it. So here's how simple it is. You just need to go to search box on top left corner. And then you can type in recognition. And make sure it's a K, not this letter C. And you click on that, it will bring you to this console. And this is where you can use pre-trained model or custom labels, do whatever you want. So I just went ahead, I say demos, right? I can say label detector. And then there you go. Here we have a picture and there's a person on a skateboard. And you can see that if I put my cursor on the skateboard, it does say a skateboard, right? Or alternatively, if there's a person, that's where the person is. And now I can even upload any pictures that I want. So I'm going to go online and download a picture. So there you go. I just downloaded this picture here. It says a car and that's indeed where the bounding box is. Uh, it pretty much crops where the car is. And in the middle, we actually have chair. And then that actually says a person. Now, this is when things get really interesting. I can see a person here. If I really squint at the screen a little bit, you can see like the top of his head and then maybe he's wearing sunglasses. Even that small of a detail is sufficient enough for AI to say that's a person. And then there's something down here that actually says wheel. Uh, obviously that's a mistake, right? Because wheel is not there. That's not a wheel, that's a tire. But since they're both circular shape, you can kind of say that this mistake is a fair game. And then here's also something interesting. If you go down the list, there's this thing called text in image. In other words, it's detecting the letters, the English words inside of the image frame. And then last but not least, this is Jeff Bezos, right? Uh, so that essentially provides the backbone of that hotel employee identification project that earlier we talked about in this video. And if that doesn't excite you, which it should, there's also the custom label, the custom training, which you can click in and get started and you can train your own job. So you're going to have to set up an S3 bucket and upload data and draw the bounding boxes as a training label and you will be able to train your customized image recognition model. And last, I just want to say that be mindful of your training data, be mindful of data privacy, data security, work with the compliance team, work with legal team, really make sure the project you're doing is solid, is verified, and that it's fair. Thank you for watching. If you like the channel, give a like and hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next video.